Hey guys, welcome to another tutorial. Today we're going to be learning about the Image Trace tool in Illustrator CC. The Image Trace tool allows you to create vectors and objects and shapes from images. Um, it could be a JPEG or a TIFF or a PNG. So it's really handy. It's a great tool. So what I got here, I've got this Eskimo image. It's a high definition or high resolution um, photograph. Um, I got it from online. Um, so what I did here is I created a few examples of what the Image Trace can do. It can make this give us like a painted type pastel look which is really cool as you can see if I zoom in here these are all shapes um, or objects and I can edit that they're a vector so I can scale that as well it's really cool um, I can bring it give you a lot of effects so just gotta play around with it and um, this is a more black and white style as you can see it's got a lot of little detail and those are all shapes as well um, we'll have to expand that but you can see what type of effect I got out of that so I'm going to show you how to use it. So pretty much what we're going to do is going to go to window and we're going to go to image trace. So somewhere near the bottom, here we go, click that and you'll get this box, the image trace box. So what we're going to do is you can just um, use any image, doesn't matter what it is, and just drag it in to Illustrator or import it. So if you click on the image, you can see up top here, it tells you some um, description. So it'll give you the PPI and the RGB color space. Um, you can embed the image. Um, as well as you can edit the original or you can image trace in as well So we're gonna use that button in a second, but first we're gonna do some editing So what we can do when we select it and use the image trace box you um, Come up the first thing will you have some options so at the top here you can see we've got auto color high color low color as well as grayscale black and white and An outline these are just presets that come with um, Illustrator um, they're, they're, I don't really use them, but because I use a preset tool here, or I customize it usually with all my designs because I want a specific style. So if you just click one of these, I'll just click low color, and it's going to go ahead and it's going to process that. So what it's doing, it's actually um, rendering that image as, you know, shapes and objects. As you can see, um, the screen, it can lag a bit as well. So make sure you have a fast computer with a lot of RAM and a good CPU or it's going to lag. So as you can see, it turns that image into that low color that we just clicked into that preset. So um, I'm just gonna press Control Z, and as you can see, it went back to the normal image. So those are some of the options there. We can also go into the preset bar, and you got some presets. You got you know three colors, um, black and white um, silhouettes. So the most common one is black and white, which I use. So if I go to preset and I click black and white logo, it, it's gonna change into black and white. So now that's what it's going to look like when we um, render it. So if I click that, um, what I can do now is if I go down to view, I have all these view different viewing options. So with this, I can view the image from a different perspective with an outline. I can just see the outlines if you can see that. Or I can view the source image. I usually leave it on tracing results so you can see what it's going to look like when you um, apply the effect. Or you can press this little eyeball next to the bar and it's going to view the source image so you can compare it what else you can do is you can go to mode down the bottom here the third option you can um, select color it's going to go ahead and render the pixel uh the you know the pixels and that type of thing it's just refining it it puts a lot of shots on your computer so it takes a bit of a while so that's it with it with color if i click grayscale and you can also put black and white as well Usually it's best to use this tool for black and white or if you're doing silhouettes um, and then customize your own design. And so um, that's pretty much what we want for now. And we're going to go to threshold and down here. And what the threshold does is the more lighter pixels there is, it's going to um, make it um, white. And the more contrast, the darker pixels, is going to turn it into black. So if I bring the threshold down, whilst having the image selected, you're going to see it, um, it's giving more of the white. So the more light there is, it's going to turn it into a white um, a white shape. And if I bring the threshold up, it's going to get more of the darker and the contrasty pixels and turn that into shapes. So if I could bring that down, something like that. You don't want too much detail because then you can't tell if it's a face. Um, but if you, you can always go into Photoshop and edit the contrast and then come back and illustrate it and do this make it look a um, bit better if you want more detail. So if you click on this advanced tab here, you've got some more options. 
Um, I'll tell you a trick. The best thing is to do is untick preview. So it doesn't lag your computer. So every time you make a change, it's not gonna you know, constantly apply the effects. So with paths, pretty much what it does, it means it adds more paths. So it will, I'm, just gonna, I'm just gonna click preview and it's, it makes the paths more straight, lined as you can see, like a squares or more like circular, more organic. Same thing for the corners as well. It will make the corners either, you know, round or pointy. And with noise, noise is pretty much how much detail is in the picture. So if I drag this down, it's going to add more grainy texture to it. So it adds more texture, which is pretty cool. So you can see like the wrinkles and that type of thing. Or if I drag it up, it's going to get rid of the noise. So it's just less, it's more, you know, um, refined, more simple. So I can bring that back. Method, don't really worry about that. I just leave it on um, a building. So it just it makes the shapes not stack on top of each other. Um, so it's easy to drag it out. Um, you can change the fills to strokes. So if I can tick, I tick strokes, it's going to change that. And if I tick off fills, it turns those main shapes into strokes and you can change the size below it by typing how much you want. I always do fills because strokes looks weird. Um, so you can do that. You can hold, click snap curves to lines as well, just below that. Just leave that box ticks if you want. It doesn't really make a difference if you untick it. I'll zoom in just to show you. And you can see the shapes just become a little bit more round or roughened. Um, not big difference. Um, as well as you can also ignore white. So if I tick that box, it's going to get rid of the white background, which is useful because I don't need it because I just want the main shape that I use for my designs. So I always tick ignore white. Well, that's what I do. Unless you want the background and you want to change the color of it, then you can use it that way. It, also, it would also tell you the paths and the anchors that it currently has and how many colors it has. So when we cl click expand, that's what it's going to be. So if I go to the top corner now, up the top hand corner, we press expand. What that does is converts all the, the image into a vector. So now it's a vector, it's shapes, it's an object. I can click all the bunch shapes together, move it around, change the color if I want. Really simple. So pretty much that's what the image trace tool does. Um, it's really handy. You can get a lot of effects with it and you can also save presets as well. Um, I'll just go back to the image trace tool. So, uh, and if you can see here, if you go to preset and click this little menu on the right here, you can actually um, create presets. I'll just quickly show you. So I have this selected. If you click this little menu bar here, you can go save new preset. So say I have this all these custom, um, I made all the custom adjustments. I can just click this menu, go save preset and call it Eskimo and then press OK. And so now I've got this um, preset down here and you can delete it or rename it, whatever you want. So yeah, that's how you guys use the image trace tool, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos each week and I hope you have a good day.